Okay, we're continuing on the Mimer Godel Yekavod Abayat, which is in Kuntresim Aleph. The Bayat Rishon Vesheni, the first and the second temples. First word in line is Hagam. First word in line is Hagam. Hagam, even though it's like nine lines from the top of the page. Hagam Shasheni, that the second temple was ten years longer, meaner Rishon than the first one. Mikomokom, nevertheless, Hayazeb Bahagbalas Zman. It was a limited amount of time. 420 years. Mashainke in Abayat Lati Lovo, which is not the case. <clears throat> the future Beit HaMikdash, Yen Nitzchi, it will be eternal. Why? Dehine Abayat HaShlishi, the third temple, Yeye, will be Mash HaKodesh Baruch Hu, what God, Pa'atzmo himself, Yivene Otao, he himself will be, will, be, will be built by God. Now you're a little bit right. I guess I mean, I would, listen. In Israel, the Jews are they're Jews. They're yeah. Jews, and in the end, yes, they want God. And they want. <clears throat> like I told you, I went to this place called Gush Etzion. I think it's Gush Etzion, and they have over there a um, <coughs> they have a what is that like a, a, a sort of like a show, a light show or something like that. Something very small about the uh, the Six Day War. <clears throat> and part of it is when one of these generals, his name is Motegor, that he took over the old city. Right? The, the Jews took over the old city. It was in the hands of the Arabs. They took it over. So he said, Jew, the, the, the Kotel is in our hands. And then after that he said, <clears throat> he said it in Hebrew. And the Hebrew works a little bit better, but especially because it's his voice. When they translate it, it doesn't come out but. But he said, listen, I'm not a religious man, and I never was. He said, but I'm touching the wall, the stones of the wall of the Kotel, and I am overcome with emotion, he said. And in Ogea Ba'avne Kotel Vanim Mitragesh. Now this is a general, it's not just, you know, a regular soldier. This is a general, he has to keep cool and cold-headed, and make decisions, split decisions all the time. There's nowhere for, you know, emotions and... You know, that's for old ladies or something. You know, to be able to get emotional. <clears throat> and you want to say sometimes a soldier gets emotional when a, a friend of his gets hurt or something like this. But to touch a, a, a stone, get a, I mean, he should be ashamed. He's touching a stone, he's getting emotional. It's a, what happened to you? You want to have your mind, you can't, a person like that can't be a general. Generals can't touch stones and get emotional about stones. <laughs> but he did. But he did. Why did it? Because he felt the, the, the Jewishness of his soul was coming out like the Jewishness of the stone is coming out. The stones are Jewish. I'm not going to be Jewish. Suddenly he felt right something. And that's present in every Jew. He overcame his fear of being Jewish. Yeah, it, I don't know if he overcame it, it overwhelmed him. anything. That's right. It just suddenly was revealed the truth, the fact. There's some Israelis that are really, really out there. Hate Jews, hate. Yeah, sure. Uh, but that's a small. Most Jews, you, you go even these tattoo people in uh, Florentine. They really want to. That's right. Playing. That's right. To buy it, Rishon Vesheni, who shenivne b'mamar avaya. The first and the second temple, they were built. First one in line is to buy it. De buy it. It's ten lines down. To buy it. The Bayad Rishon Vesheni, the first and the second temples, were built by the command of God. Upakudato. And his orders. And we built it. But the third temple, God himself will build it. God himself will build the third temple. But it will be in the service now of us in the time of exile, Davka. 
<clears throat> Hashem, whatever reason it is, He put us into this terrible exile, and we build the third temple by means of our work. Okay, Yonah, you with us? So it means that all these Jews that died in the Holocaust and died in Siberia, nobody even knows who they are. No one knows they were there buried, they were burned, or they were eaten by wolves or something. And no one knows of their tr- incredible sacrifice that they made because they were Jews. Because on that, the Holy Temple will be built. That's the work of the Jewish people, self-sacrifice. And also according to our self-sacrifice that we make. Right? Incomparable to what those people did, but you can never tell. Right? You can never tell if we're standing on the shoulders of these people. You know, it's like the... They, they want to meet, they get cookies from the cookie jar. So one stands on the other, one stands on the other shoulders. And finally, the last little kid, right, that he's only, you know, one year old, and he, was, he weighs less than anybody else. He can't do anything. But they tell him to get the cookies. He can get the cookies. That's, what, that's us. We're standing on the shoulders of all these giants, these incredible heroes that gave their lives just because they're Jewish, is all of this work, that's what's going to bring the third temple from heaven. By means of the service of what's called <coughs> purification, refinement, refining the world. This is the Gullus in the time of exile. By learning Torah and doing the commandments. And true service of God. In other words, you're really serving God in order to serve God. You're not doing it for yourself. According to your prayer. What is prayer? Prayer is you really try that you have a chance to talk to God. You're alone with God three times a day. You have your chance to talk to Him. His doors are open. You can go right in there. Talk to God. He's waiting to hear. Waiting to hear. By means of this will be the future redemption. And God, he'll build the third temple. And the third temple will be eternal. Who believes a thing like that? I mean, really, this is fan- doesn't make any sense. But on the other hand, Jewish people don't make any sense. Jewish people don't make any sense. I go in the, in the marketplace, and, and to the, there's Chabad boys that do it all the time. And you ask these people that are walking, you know, in the streets, and their weird hairdos, all sorts of piercings and tattoos and crazy stuff, and doing crazy stuff. Hey, want to put on tefillin? Right? I, I just this other, and they stop and they put on. Yeah. Just this other, just this other. You, know, you should have been there. It was something amazing. It's really hot outside, so I stood. I really wanted to go. And back, and it was very hot. And around. anyway, so there were these people walking. <clears throat> we had already wrapped up all the tefillin. There were these people walking. I heard them speaking English. So I said to the guys, with the, they were walking with their girlfriends. I said, uh, "Hey, put on tefillin." I said, "Do something Jewish. You know, you're in the Holy Land. What you're doing, you could do in in in, in Switzerland. You know, walk around looking at the, at the, at the." at the markets and see the sky and the birds and things like that, that you could do anywhere in the world. Here, do something Jewish, put on tefillin. He said, eh, I don't know. So they walked a little bit, and I, I saw him, he stopped, and he talked to his girlfriend. I said, come on, just do it. You know, it doesn't cost any money. It's worth millions. You know, you really enjoy it. It just takes a, one minute, you know. <laughs> do it. Do it. Do it. So he said, so he talked to his girlfriend. They said, okay. Okay, and they came and they put on the villain. The these guys put on the villain. And they were happy, and it's not the first time this has happened. Exactly the same thing. This exact same thing has happened to me four or five times. And sometimes these people, uh, uh, English speakers, they'll put on the villain for the first time in their lives. And if they see their friends doing it, what are you doing? So I ask, are you, is your mother Jewish? Yes, yeah, she's Jewish, but what is this? So this one of the guys says, you don't know what this is? I don't know what it is. <laughs> you're putting on the villain, you're serving the creator. One of them, I remember, he, he put on this, he put on tefillin, he called his mother, made a long, this, look what I'm doing, I'm in Israel. Right? <clears throat> That's so cool. 
His mother said, I, 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 you're going to become religious. You're going to become religious. So I said, tell your mother to check the mezuzahs, right? You're gonna, <laughs> something's wrong with her son, right? <laughs> <laughs> but his mother was happy. She was happy. Oh, he was going to do. It, Jews want to do it. Jews are crazy. Jews are crazy, and they're crazy for God. They're crazy for God. And you see the ones that, that, are, that are against God, you see they're fire against God, right? Take a non-Jew. God, does, God exists, you know? God is, okay, he exists. It doesn't exist. Right? A Jew says, you ask a Jew, God, God, God does not exist. And he just gets angry. I can prove it. I have 57 proofs. I've got, I'm working on this day and night to prove God does. What the, if you don't care if he doesn't exist, what do you have to prove? Right? Working so hard. <laughs> <laughs> you have to work so hard, right? <clears throat> I, I would like to go back. I mean, uh, always talk to God. Right. And I said to him, I said, you know, you are the most religious man that I ever came across. <laughs> Always thinking about God, right? <laughs> there, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you a short story. There was I was once went to the army and I put the fill in on people. It's a long story, but I'll make it short. It was in the Lebanon War, <clears throat> and uh, there was a whole row of jeeps that were going to go out <clears throat> to do something, some, uh, <clears throat> I mean, they all had these big uh, bulletproof vests on, and there was a big, one of these big, these heavy machine guns in the back of the thing. Okay, so I went, I went, that was early in the morning, we went into Lebanon, we went into Lebanon, and we got permission to go in, it was, anyway, it was so, so I asked the first person if he wanted to put on tefillin, and he put on tefillin. I asked the second guy if he wanted to put on tefillin, and he started cursing me out, and, you know, you religious people, I hate you all, and et cetera. You know, he just really was... So I said, okay, you know, uh, listen, this guy is he's risking his life for me. You know, what am I doing? I, 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 what, what can I tell him? So I said, okay, you know, uh, have a good day or something. Anyway, luckily, the third person called me. He said, Rebbe, Rebbe, come here. I want to put on tefillin. <clears throat> so as I'm walking over to him, so I'm telling this guy who's cursing me, I'm sorry, I got to go to this uh, so I go to this third person, and the pers third person yells out to me, Rebbe, if I put on tefillin, will God protect me? So I'm, I'm almost up to him. I said, listen, whether you put on tefillin or not, God will protect you. You know, you're doing a good thing, God will protect you. But if God protects you for, for free, so do something for him for free. Put on tefillin. So he put on tefillin, third guy, and the second guy who was cursing me out called me back. So I said to him, listen, you know, I think that you finished with me. You know, he cursed my mother and my father and my, uh, my whole family, you know. I thought, thought maybe there was somebody, you know, he forgot, <laughs> he forgot in, the, in the family, you know. Maybe your daughter, maybe your sister is married, maybe they did So I figured, okay, you know, I said, I think, you know, I think, you know, you, you, you did a good job on me. He said, no, 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 I want to put on villain. So I went and I put the villain. I didn't ask any questions. So he put on villain, and I said, what happened? You know, why did you decide to put on villain? He said, listen, to put on tefillin, to go to heaven, to put on tefillin, to get protected, to put on tefillin so I won't go to hell. He says, to put on tefillin for any religious reason, I'm not willing to do. But to put on tefillin for no reason at all, I'm willing to do. <clears throat> in other words, that's in a way the essence of what Judaism is. I just, listen, I don't understand what God is. I have absolutely no idea what it is. No idea, but... I have this feeling that there, there is such a thing. And it's not exactly what you religious people say. I'll do it right? That you have to put on the boxes and you have to do all this and you have to dress like this. And this. But nevertheless, I do have a feeling that it's true and it, I do have a feeling that it doesn't make any sense and I'm willing to do this for no reason. If you say it doesn't make any sense, then I'm willing to do it. <clears throat> so that's the essence of a dude. The same thing is going to be, it's called in, in Hebrew, it's called hesach. Hadat, Hesach Hadat, beyond understanding. So that's going to be the third temple. It's going to be infinite in time and infinite in space. What do you mean infinite in space? It has to be certain measurements. There's certain measurements that has to be. You can't just, you know, everything is the holy temple. It has to be certain exact measurements. But it says like the ark, 
that was in the Holy Temple that it was measurable and it wasn't measurable. It was actually two and a half amas wide, long, and it was in a room that was 20 amas wide. And if you measured from one end of it to the wall, it was 10 amas, and here's 10 amas. So it had to be exactly two and a half amas. Where are the two and a half amas? The whole room is 20. So you figured if you measured from here to there, it would be 20 minus one and a half. 10 minus one and a half, right? It should be eight and a half, and there should be eight and a half. Then you add on the two and a half together, or whatever, eight and a quarter, I'm sorry. Yeah, the, <clears throat> you add them up together, and it comes out to be... Uh, but no. It, the, 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 it says the Aron Eno Minamida. It was not measurable. The same thing in the third temple. It'll be, that's how it's up in heaven. Weighs, who knows how many trillions of tons, billions, I don't know, tons. I'm not an architect. Of tons... And it'll be a physical, actual building that's waiting there. And it'll come down. It doesn't make any sense. <coughs> it says, well, that's what every Jew. Jews don't make sense. Right. Jews don't make sense. That's the whole essence of what a Jew is. Doesn't make sense. But it's really good. Really, really good. Incredibly better than we can possibly imagine. Life is more precious than anything we can possibly imagine. Amazing gift that's given eternal life in this physical world. Is it possible? Do we believe it? Yes. And that's going to be manifested in the third temple, and it all depends on us, as we'll talk about more, God willing, tomorrow.